Hello. Um, I've managed to get up to the wood today. I haven't been able to get up here for a few weeks, so it's really nice to get here. Um, it is raining, and uh, it's predicted quite heavy rain tonight. In fact, it's getting heavy now. So I've just added um, a sheet of polythene to my um, shelter, just as a bit of added protection for the front. I'll see how that goes later. So, a cup of coffee. Um, I want to do a giveaway. Um, I've got 600 subscribers and I'm not really sure how that happened. So I'm going to do a giveaway today at some point. And I also want to show you my bill hook. Um, and the sheaf I made for it. And uh, I'll also talk a little bit about UK knife laws. Um, there's been a lot of uh, discussions on um, YouTube, Wessex Blades, well done the fur, writing all those letters. I've written to my MP as well. So I'll do a quick chat about that as well. And uh, oh, I better turn the camera off because the rain is getting heavy. <laughs> okay, so this is um, a British. A British bill hook. Um, I believe this is the Staffordshire version because it has the blade on the top as well. Um, similar to the Yorkshire version, only that's got a longer handle. Um, not convinced about the handle at the moment, I don't know. I can't, I can hold it two-handed, but I'm not convinced it's going to, um, you know, stay complete. It doesn't feel particularly um, particularly strong, so I might put one of those small Sammy uh, type handles on it, made with sort of different layers of wood and bone, etc. I'll batter it to death first and see. I tried to get a vintage one or an old one on uh, eBay, but I kept missing. So I bought this from Morris of Dunsford, Devon. Did a bit of research, and they seem to be the um, sort of best reviews for bill hooks so it's, as I say it's a double double um, bladed uh, bill hook I think it's quite an ancient tool I think in the Middle Ages they used these as weapons of war as well they stuck them on long sticks to see why it's a pretty vicious looking thing but I'll have a little go with it I mean Supposedly, actually, let me just put my gloves on, be a bit sensible. Um, I think it's just, you use it in a similar way as you would an axe. So if you're on a block like this, put what you're cutting at the far, at the um, far end. And um, so that if it does slip, you're cutting there and it doesn't slip down on you there and take your leg off. Definitely um, quite a quite a vicious uh, thing, but um, actually I don't think you can see this. Let me just turn this up a bit. That's better. Yeah, quite a vicious um, chopper. And obviously you can use both edges depending on what you want to go through. Yeah, it cuts really well, you can even use the other side. But I think with this you've got to be careful you don't chop your head off by pushing that pointy bit into your head. So I do sort of try and work quite arm's length with it. It's, uh, ooh, quite a good chopper. Um, the reason I got it is this is very good for 
taking out low undergrowth like brambles and bracken and you can really clear it. I mean it's actually used as a hedging tool these days but it's um, quite, a, quite a thing which puts me on to British laws on knives. Um, with the new proposals coming in um, I thought I'd do an experiment, so I went on to Amazon and um, it's starting to rain heavily again. Went on to Amazon okay. um, to see if I could buy a knife, and indeed I could, but when I got round to To it, um, all I had to do was tick a box to say that I was over 18, so I cancelled that order and then I went to another site, a British site, and bought um, a sort of budget knife which is actually coming today but I'm not at home. Um, and with them, I had to send. Um, I had to send them a photograph of my passport to prove that I was over 18. So it shows you that, um, I don't know, I mean it's, it's ridiculous that you can buy these sort of great big zombie type knives on Amazon without any proof of, of ID, which is bizarre. So it shows you. I think the thing is, if you're sending them a photo of your passport or your driving license, then surely that would be enough. It's the same as, you know, having to sign for a package when it arrives. Okay, so, <laughs> by the by, what I did for this um, bill hook was I made a, a sheaf because as you can see it's quite a, a dangerous thing to be hauling around with you so I've um, made a, a sheaf to keep it safe it's a bit stiff at the moment but I'll get there there you go so I made that for it, which works quite well, but I've also got, um, it's quite a heavy um, tool, so I'm going to use a, a sort of shoulder strap with it, I've just got this one on for the time being until I find something, or I get hold of some leather, I'm a bit short at the moment, but yeah, that's what I made for the bill hook, it looks even more medieval now, but it works quite well. Uh, it's quite quite strong. I haven't actually sewed this one, I've just used bolts on it, so it's getting rained on me. So yeah, but it's interesting, you can buy something like this without any proof of ID or age, yet a small knife, you can't. Or they're not going to let you. I know they count this as a tool, but you know. So uh, yeah, I mean, the weird thing is, I can find it my little neck knife, which I got for a tenner, you know, quite a few years ago. I got that on Amazon, wasn't asked anything, wasn't even asked to give my um, age or anything. So I've written to my MP and I hope everybody else does that. And I mean, kids on the street aren't going to pay 200, 150, 200, even 300 quid for a knife. You know, so the, the sort of knife makers in Britain and the artisans who make, you know, knives, they're not cheap, so... And frankly, the knives I've got at home in my kitchen are a lot sharper, a lot pointier, and a lot longer bladed than the knives we tend to use. So it just seems a bit mad to me. But oh well, there you go. That's my bit with the knife law. 
and the bill hook, <laughs> which I quite like. It's a bit of a beast, but I do quite like it. Yeah. <laughs> Just gonna put my um, rather nice star chart bandana down, which I love because I do like looking at constellations. After using something like the bill hook and thinking how dangerous it is, I thought I'd go into first aid. So I have my first aid kit with me, which is always in my rucksack at the top, usually inside a cup actually. But um, this is quite a comprehensive first aid kit. Oops, it's got pretty much everything in it. Uh, eye wash. Um, yeah, I put quite a lot in here. Um, let's have a look. I have needles and thread. I have tick removers, which are handy, which I've never used, but there you go. I have a little mirror to help you with the eye wash. I've got a lighter, um, lots of plasters, bandages, uh, safety pins, what else is in here? Tweezers, um, little iodine dabbers. A warning about iodine, don't use it if you have a thyroid problem. My favourite little pen knife, which is one of these tiny little buck, um, I don't know if you can see that, buck little pen knife, it's great, I really like that, a really nice little pen knife. Um, so I've got quite a bit of stuff in there, bandages, plasters, all sorts in there, and they all go, tweezers, they all go in there. And then I also have um, tampon, salt and pepper. I always take put in my first aid kit a little card which has um, emergency numbers and address etc on it. Water purification, a little fire steel, more bandages, bottle of iodine, tape etc. Tampon. So there's quite a lot of stuff in there, um, but that's the that's the big um, first aid kit, which I think is pretty comprehensive. I mean, if I managed to slash myself with my bill hook, I would hope I could use that and put that all back together again in a minute. Could use that quite well. I mean, I do know how to use everything that's in there, so I'll tidy that up later. Um, but, so that's got quite a lot of stuff in there. But I also use this, which is um, attached to my bag. I always have a whistle, a bit of paracord and a little tiny light. But in here, this is a little mini first aid kit. Um, let me, and it's got quite a lot of stuff in there, um, including bandages, scalpel blade, uh, liquid skin, all that kind of stuff, and that all goes in there. But when I was at the prepper's meet, there was a company there called Polymath, who I missed actually. Everybody was getting loads of freebies, and I missed out. I didn't didn't manage to catch up with them. But I had a look in at their website, which is quite cool. Um, and they do something similar, which is now going to go on my other bag, which is this one, which is their little, again, little Medi first aid kit. Again, I've got a whistle, a bit of paracord. This, I prefer this in a way because it's brighter and I can see it. But this is quite good as well. It's, um, it's in a little aluminium tube, so it's... Um, Oops, there you go. You can push it out. And it's a roll, which has got the liquid skin on it as well. Um, and sort of sutures and stuff like that. Now, what I've got in mine is a scalpel blade and I keep some pills, but I've just found that this does work. You can get a couple of, well, what I tend to keep in there is a couple of antihistamines and, um, a couple of paracetamol just in case and I've also managed to get a scalpel blade in there as well I think scalpel blades are always useful it's just a little cutting tool so it's quite nice I quite like that it's 
similar to the one I've got. I think mine's just that little bit fatter. Um, I, I do tend to get a little bit more in there. I mean, you can buy things like liquid skin. What's nice about these is they do refills as well. So when or if I use that, I might just put the refill in. So um, for the giveaway, I'm going to, I bought two of these. So as part of my giveaway, I'm going to use, uh, give one of these away. Um, they're quite, you know, so they're quite handy and quite nice and just go in your pocket or on, the, on your bag like I do with this one. I mean, sometimes you're not that close to your bag and uh, even when I go to work, I just keep this on my work bag as well with the whistle and everything else. So if you just say you're in on my comments, I'll send you uh, an unopened one of these. Um, so they're quite quite nice little first aid kits. Everything's in there that you need. You can add little bits and pieces like I have. Um, so yeah, just put on the comments I'm in and I'll see what else I can find to put in the package. I know it's quite a small giveaway, but it's, um, it's just a little thank you for everyone that's subscribed to me, which is really sweet. And thank you so much to all the people that have left comments. That's really nice and really useful, helpful tips. And it's been brilliant. So again, everyone, you know, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, so and check out Polymath Products website as well. They have some quite nice things. What they do have, I've got a light on here. What they do have with these little tiny atom lights, I actually quite like these. Yeah, it's quite a sweet little light. That I like that. It's just handy for finding stuff in your bag, and because it's luminescent, I'm going to try this tonight actually and see how long it sort of stays luminescent for. I don't know. Maybe leave it in the light. Yeah, but quite nice little, just just the right size really. So very similar to that, but cool, nice little thing. So yeah, I'll put that in the post. Um, yeah, I'm afraid it's going to have to be UK only again. Um, well, maybe not. I'll I'll see. Um, but yeah, just put in the comments. I'm in, and I'll see what else I can put in the package with that and I'll have to have a route round and see if I can find some other bits and pieces. Okay, so again, thank you so much. I'm using my um, summer knife at the moment. I tend to get really quite hot hands and sort of warmer woods tend to get a bit slippy. For some reason this African black wood, which is the same kind of thing they make uh, clarinets out of. Um, stays really cool in your hand and it's easier for me to work with. So it's the same as my usual knives which is the Enzo Trapper Blade which I really do like. It's, um, this one's a slightly harder carbon steel which holds its edge really well and isn't actually that hard to sharpen so it's quite a nice little knife so I'm on to the summer knife at the moment put the winter knife away and bring out the summer knife shop find Mr. Tom four pack of peanut brittle. Love these, they're a bit addictive, they're a bit Moorish. Good old pound shop or pound land. Tasty. Definitely raspberries. Mmm, that's quite heavy rain. That's quite torrential. 
but at the moment I seem to be dry under the tarp for now anyway it's just whether the wind starts blowing we'll see Yep, that's heavy rain. Yeah, it's a bit difficult to do anything when the rain's this heavy. I can't really go out in it. I might as well just stay put and wonder if I can light a fire later. The temperature has dropped quite significantly. But, yep, yeah, torrential. At the moment, that seems to be dry, but fingers crossed. Right, so even though it's raining quite heavily still, I'm going to see if I can get this fire going. It might go out with the rain, but we'll see. If I can get it going enough, it should be okay. Okay, nothing elaborate in this rain. Just a simple dinner. What's funny is my hand seems to be protecting the fire. The rain's just suddenly started coming down again with force, so... Oh, it's, well, I think I'll get a hot dinner anyway. God, it's chucking it down. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can get that fire, keep it going. Whew. Okay, so what I've found is when the rain's torrential, get the pine wood on and waft like crazy. And then when it eases up, like it has a bit now, and it's still raining quite heavy, but you can actually start putting the harder woods on. Just to make sure you save some pine, just in case. But I think things are going okay. Well, we'll see if we can keep this going all night. Well, not all night, but all evening, and see how it goes. It's still raining. Oh, it's still good. 